With Simulink, you can reuse existing functionality from multiple tools and also from other languages. And that makes Simulink a great simulation integration platform. Uh, the place where you can design and implement things made out of multiple components and systems like, like the ones that you see here. In the last few years, you've been getting more options that make it easy to integrate C and C++ code into your models. For example, the C function block helps you in the use cases when you need to call multiple functions, allocate or deallocate memory, pre-process or post-process the external code, and work with persistent data. In 18B, we introduced the C color block, and this is perfect for use cases when you just need to call C or C++ functions from external source code and libraries. And it's a really simple way to do that with this block. One of the other advantages of the C color block is the tight integration with our other tools like Simulink Coverage, Simulink Test, Simulink Design Verifier, and Simulink Coder for verifying and implementing your models that include that external code. And more recently, we added the Simulink Code Importer, which is a user interface that makes it easy to create libraries of C color blocks, the one from 18B that I just mentioned. And that gives you a, a UI that makes it easier to, to bring that custom code in your models. And so the Code Importer, it guides you step by step to import the code. It also analyzes the code automatically and then on the other side, you basically get a Simulink library of blocks that behave the same way. And with Simulink, you can actually integrate more than just C and C++ code in your models. In fact, FMU import and export have been around for a few years to help you work better with those components from other tools. And if you need to build and manage your own block sets, perhaps you're part of a tools group, then the blocks designer helps you do that. You start with code templates that we provide, then you design, build, and test the custom blocks you need, and you can package them as a toolbox to share with all other uh, users in your organization. And you can import existing block sets to maintain them going forward with blocks designer, or you can actually build brand new block sets with this tool. So those are some of the new ways that you can integrate external components in your models. And it's also worth mentioning that you have the full power of S functions and the S function builder, which have been around for a while. But these new ways that I'm showing here simplify things a little bit. So those are capabilities for integrating external components. Now let's talk about managing complexity. And here I want to start with projects because projects give you a way to organize, manage, and share your code and models. It's a nice way to contain your work in a single environment and interface that works with both MATLAB and Simulink. I'll start by opening the Airframe example project. There you saw that the project environment is automatically set. So things like functions that need to run on startup and setting the project path, all those happen automatically. You can also customize shortcuts to files and functions that you use frequently. And projects give you all sorts of advantages, like options for sharing your work from email to GitHub to FMUs. Also dependency analysis and management tools. There are checks that help upgrade your work to newer MATLAB releases. We also talked about automatic environment configuration options. And there's also source control integration. One of the things that I want to cover is in the source integration area. So now you can auto merge branches that have changes in different subsystems of the same Simulink model file. So if we open the branches view, it shows us that branch two in the is the current branch. And I can view specific branches. So for example, in branch two here, Bob and my team made some changes to the analog control model. And in branch one, Alice made changes to the same model, but in a different subsystem. And I can merge those changes with just one click. And if you need to review and approve changes, then you can still do different merge in the pane here on the right. Okay, so that's auto merge for improving team workflows, 
with source control. Projects also help you share your work with colleagues using all their MATLAB releases. You can actually export all the files in a project with just one function, which is simulink.export to version. And the first input is the project to export. The second input is the name of the output file. And the third input is the release you want. And you can go back up to seven years. You see, it gives you warnings. If you have functionality that wasn't supported in the old release, so that you can adjust accordingly. And when it's complete, you see the zip file in the current directory. Another great thing about projects that I want to highlight is the ability to do dependency analysis. And the dependency analyzer shows you the relationship between files and you can filter by file type. In this case, I'm only viewing models and data files. And I can focus the view only on the required or impacted files for a portion of my design. And I can package that subset of my design or share a report on it for people that are interested only in those components. Last but not least, if I open this model, the nonlinear actuator, with projects, you can also protect your IP when you share your work with suppliers or other groups. So when you save a model as a protected model, you now have this option to also package all the dependencies in a project. So if we do that, and we go to the designated folder, we extract the archive that was generated. You see that it packaged only the files that we selected. It protected our design, and it also generated a test hardness model that your supplier can use to run the model, but still keeping your IP safe. Okay, so those are a few new capabilities in projects. And now we can close the project and open up another example about subsystem reference and model comparison, which are tools to manage complexity as you componentize and collaborate with others. In this case, we'll use the SF car example. And in the first instance, I'm going to make this subsystem a subsystem reference. I do that by just selecting it in the model. And then in the tool strip, I can convert to a subsystem reference. Click convert. Save the changes. And here we see the reference subsystem file. So this gives you a new way to componentize your design in addition to libraries and model references. And for specific guidelines for which method is best for your use case, I encourage you to check out the documentation or some of our other videos. Okay, now if we open this script and run the model comparison, we've added major improvements to this tool to make it easier to distinguish differences between models. And you see that with the highlights as I click through specific elements in the list. So those are new capabilities for managing complexity. Now let's move on to packaging simulations. What that means is that you can create apps, web apps, and FMUs from models using Simulink Compiler. For example, if we take this model of a mass spring damper system, and we could package this into an app to share the insights of the simulation while letting users tune the inputs and parameters and also monitor the outputs. So if we look at the MATLAB app interface that comes with the example, you see we can add pictures, edit controls for the parameters, scopes for the outputs, and we can make the button simulate the model. If we switch to the code view of this design, there you see the code that runs when the button is pressed. Those are the parameters used, and there you see the sim function that runs the model. When we run the app, 
we get the standalone view and I can press the button to test. And also here's what the web app version looks like. I can access and run this from a web browser. So again, you can package simulations as standalone apps, web apps, and FMUs. So that was a quick overview of Simulant Compiler, but that's a new exciting capability for packaging, deploying, and sharing your simulations with colleagues and collaborators and suppliers as well. So now we can check that off our list.